In this video, I will show you how you can find the steady state distribution given some transition matrix. So let's assume the following transition matrix. We have three states, A, B, and C. The probability of staying in state A, so if you're in state A to be in state A again, is one third. The probability of going to state B from state A is one third. And the probability if today's state is state A going to state C tomorrow is also a third. Then the probability if you're today in state B to go into state A tomorrow is 1 over 2 and probability of remaining in state B is 1 over 2, 2 which remains a zero probability going from state B to state C and the last from state C the probability of going to state A from state C is 1 over 5 the probability of going to state B from state C is 1 over 5 and probability of remaining in state C is 3 over 5 this gives us the matrix of transition probabilities. From this initial vector, multiplying by this matrix to infinity will give us the steady state. This allows us immediately to find an alternative solution to the steady state. In particular, we will find, if we call this matrix P, P times X steady state should give us X steady state. So, if we multiply the steady state vector times this matrix, we should get that steady state vector again. We can rewrite that expression as P minus I times X steady state equals to the zero vector. Because we just subtract the vector X steady state and to get dimensions correctly, we need to multiply the identity matrix and we can calculate this expression. So let me rewrite this matrix subtracting the identity matrix. So the top left becomes minus two thirds, the middle one just becomes minus one half, and the bottom one minus two fifths. Okay, now this times some steady state vector, so x a, x b, x c must be equal to the zero vector. So we have a system of three equations, which you can solve provided this matrix has full rank. Now unfortunately this matrix is only rank 2. But if we set want to find the shares, so the proportion of people in state A, the proportion of people in state B, and the proportion of people in state C in steady state, we know that these proportions have to sum up to 1. So we know that xA plus xB plus xC is equal to 1. So we have four conditions, three of which are linearly dependent. So we have to delete one of these three rows and replace it with this condition to find our steady state. So for convenience, there's a zero in the bottom one. Let's delete the top one. So we delete the top condition and replace it by this condition, which is simply 1, 1, and 1. And now we don't get the 0 vector. Let me erase this function here. We simply get 1, 0, 0. OK? And we have our system of three equations with three unknowns. Now we can solve this system using Cromer's rule. Now for Cromer's rule, we first need to have the determinant of this matrix. So the determinant of A is equal to the main diagonal is 1 over 5, this diagonal is 0, and this diagonal is 1 over 15. Then the raising diagonal, the main raising diagonal is, there's a minus here, so it's plus 1 over 6. And the last one, since this one is 0, is simply 2 over 15. Now we can simplify that, this plus this is 1 fifth. So we are end up with 2 fifths and 1 sixth. So we can divide by 30. So we get 12 plus 5 is 17. Okay, so the term of our matrix, let me erase that and rewrite it, is 17 over 30. Okay, now if you want to find xA, 
we simply need the determinant with respect to xa, which means we replace the first column by this vector to the right, and we will get this xa element if we take the ratio of this determinant over this determinant. So let's calculate this determinant. So we have 1, 0, 0, which means that this diagonal and the last diagonal are 0. So we're left with the main diagonal. And the main diagonal is simply 1 over 5. And as it turns out, this diagonal is 0, this diagonal is 0, and this diagonal is 0. So this is our final solution. But we can plug this in, so we get xA is equal to 1 over 5 over 17 over 30. Now we can flip the bottom one. We can rewrite that as 1 over 5 times 30 over 17. But here the 6 cancels, and we're left with 6 here, 1 over 1. And our xA is equal to 6 over 17. Okay. Now let's look at xB. So the term of A where we replace the xB column, which is the middle one, by this vector. Let's do the same exercise. So we know that from all the falling diagonals, the main one is 0. This one is 0 because the 0 is here. So we're left with this diagonal, which is 1 over 15. And now we need to look at the raising diagonal. So this one is 0. This one is 0. So we're left with this one, which is 2 over 15. So plus 2 over 15, since there's a negative sign. But that's simply 1 over 5. If you look closely, and we get x b equals 6 over 17 because the term of xb is the same as the term of xa. Okay, last one. We can either directly infer, since all three need to sum up to 1, 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 5 gives us xc, or we calculate the determinant of a x c, which is simply replacing the third column with this vector, and we find that all falling diagonals are 0, and the only raising diagonal is this one here, which is 1 over 6. It gives us a determinant. Plugging this in here will give us 5 over 17 as our final distribution among these given these transition matrix. Thank you for watching.